Hi. Hello. My name is Julius Suge from the Philippines. I'm pursuing my master's degree at, right now at Concord University. And I'm happy to share with you today the, the secret for our activity, how we produce rice without using or with zero, without using a commercial fertilizer or synthetic pesticide. So this undertaking is under the guidance of my advisors, Professor Do Huan King and Professor Yang So Kim. So yesterday we are lucky we witnessed the global trend of crop production, the challenges that are threatening our crops right now. So uh, yesterday Professor Jo Professor Jo has presented these uh, challenges, similar challenges uh, falls through in our rice production. Uh, the big challenge is food security. We, we can ask ourselves, can we cope with the increasing demand? Because uh, right now, the population worldwide is still growing. So uh, most of the developing countries, are rice is their staple food. So can we uh, cope with the demand and supply gap? Then another problem is the, uh, the pollution or the problem created by the intensified uh, farming technologies because uh, most of the government uh, intensified the production of rice so that they can uh, they can meet the increasing demand of their population but what is happening now this pro the problem was created uh, the technology the modern technology created another problem uh, particularly in the environment right now we are uh, experiencing the undeniable threat of global warming or, or the climate change, which is uh, rice is uh, the most threatened crops. <clears throat> then, something we should do, something should be done to address these challenges and to reverse the current trend leading to sustainable rice production. This can be achieved by environmentally friendly crop production system. It is high time to get back to the fundamentals of agriculture, which is, the, which is called the sustainable agriculture. Uh, the key is to build a sound and scientific principle that will increase, increase again or restore the fertility of the soil that will lead to a more robust or more resistant to pests a rice that is resistant to pests and most of all a good or quality produce. So we simply define or we simply describe natural farming, natural science farming as the farming that respects nature because it is environmentally friendly, it is sustainable without using any synthetic or any, uh, any inputs that will degrade the environment. So fish amino acid is a uh, nutrient uh, used in, in the technology of natural science farming. This experiment is anchored to, in totality about the uh, how we will we will uh, prove if natural farming really can can make, can produce we can we use the technology in producing uh, rice rice grain. So. We choose this amino acid because uh, this amino acid contains uh, protein nitrogen. We all know that nitrogen is the most important uh, nutrient element needed by crops, needed by, by rice to produce more tillers during uh, vegetative stage and to produce more grains during the panicle, uh, panicle initiation or during the, uh, during the, uh, yeah, during the panicle initiation stage. Uh, that's why uh, we we use this uh, this amino acid as the nitrogen source of our rice uh, rice crop. So it is also uh, interesting to know that it can promote protein, it can 
promote micro action in the soil and it can promote nutrient uptake and chlorophyll production. If, if this all, if, we, if they work together, it will become beneficial to our rice plant. So, how can we make this amino acid? So, uh, I, I know that we have all the experts here in the natural science farming. So, I think there are a lot of, uh, they have, we have common standards, or there are some, some uh, differences because we, we, we need to consider some uh, climatic condition. We have different climatic conditions in different countries. So anyway, the fermentation might be the different. The fermentation process or, or the duration of fermentation. But the most, uh, I want to emphasize here the common ingredients, which is very basic, which is very uh, readily available in, in all our, uh, in the household. We just need the fish, I mean, a fish byproduct, brown sugar, ISO, uh, porous paper or mosquito net, rubber band, and clay or chart or the container. Then the process of making uh, fish amino acid is very simple. Just chop, just uh, chop into pieces, small pieces, the, the fish, uh, fish byproduct and mix with equal amount of sugar. Mix well, put into the container. Then seal it with sugar again. Then cover with porous paper. Then put in the well ventilated, dark, cool place, so that we will wait for the for the mixture to to ferment. It will take around two to six months to so that we can produce a good uh, concoction. And it is uh, it can be used by foliar or by soil drenching. We can water in water uh, directly applied into the soil or throw mist spray in the foliage of our crops. So the experiment was uh, conducted in Paju, uh, one and a half hour from Seoul by car, and we conducted uh, transplanting last May 27, 2016. And the rice we used is the Japonica type rice. It is common in Korea. The local term for this rice is Chunchong rice, and it has a 150 days maturity. Uh, we use, we employ the Randomized complete lock design with four replications. Each plot measures five by five, or the total experimental plot is 400 square meter. Then the fish amino acid treatment. For our control, we, do, we did not use uh, any fish amino acid. For treatment one, we used the 2,000 dilution. For treatment two, we used 1,000 dilution. And for treatment three, we used 500 dilution. Uh, these are the, the nutrients. We, we follow the standard or the book or the references we, we have gathered from our expert. So type 2 treatment was applied during the active delivery stage. Anyway, the component of uh, type 2 nutrients are these. OSN or Oriental Herbal Nutrient, FPJ or uh, Prevented Plant Juice, PRB or brown rice vinegar, uh, calcos, and lactic acid bacteria, and also the FAA. FAA uh, depending on our treatment, on our on the on the dilution of the experiment. So we applied all the nutrient during the 13 days after transplanting and until the 14 days after transplanting. This period are the vegetative states of the rice crop. We uh, applied five times with this uh, nutrient. <coughs> then for the next treatment, we use the transition treatment for two times. During the panic initiation stage, panic initiation stage can be determined when there, when you pull, uh, when you get a uh, step of the rice, you can see the two millimeter uh, wide, wide uh, particle in the, in the uh, stem or inside the, the vascular membrane or the silent. So you can see a two, cent, two millimeter white, a protruding white, uh, white uh, small piece of white uh, uh, membrane. So we, we determine that when we, we see that during uh, after 59 days after transplanting. So we spread immediately with this transition treatment. Then we repeated the application during the heading stage for 80 days after transplanting. 
the component are this. <coughs> then for the next treatment, we use the type 3 treatment during the flowering stage. So it is visible when you see the the rice panicle already appearing after the heading stage, you can see the spikelets are now uh, producing uh, this, uh, uh, quite uh, pollen, uh, pollen. So you can, we can we already spray with this uh, treatment uh, containing all the OSM, almost similar, almost similar uh, component, but they differ only on the dilution, the dilution rate or the concentration. <coughs> then last treatment we applied in the rice crop is uh, type four treatment during the mil milking or soft dough stage. Then these are the activities we have done before uh, producing a producing a good grain. So before uh, transplanting, we scattered or we broadcast IMO4 in the soil. Then we use a mechanical transplanter because you know in Korea they are already fully mechanized. Manual labor is not common in Korea. But in the Philippines, we are still using manual uh, transplanting. But here, we use this uh, machine. So the planting distance is 30 by 15. It is already predetermined, or the setting of the machine is, is already this way. But if, but if you will use uh, manual transplanting, manual transplanting, you can uh, manipulate the distance. Uh, in the Philippines, we use 20 by 20 or 20 by 15. But here in Korea, they are using 30 by 15. The, the average seedling per till, the number of these per, per, per crop, uh, it's quite um, uh, many, it is 10. Usually, uh, in the Philippines, we use one or two to three. But here, because the machine is already, okay. Then, we control, we use this, uh, we do manual weeding, we release the snake, and we, allow propagation of proliferation of the snail because somehow they can help us control the weeds. And we keep good water level to suppress the weeds. Then we do replanting. When we observe that there are dead hills, then spraying of all the nutrients. We apply the nutrient through full yard spraying. We use also liquid IMO and bioinsecticide. When we observe that there are pests, pest the plants. Then these are the transition or growth transition of the crop. You can see from weak seedling to this uh, very robust and uh, productive rice plant. Then you can see the root profile. The, this is the control and this is the treatment. You can see the profuse and the sturdiness of the roots and the thickness of the root when they are applied with this amino acid. Then you can see I just took we just took this picture just to compare the the resistance to latching or to resistance to strong winds. Natural crop, oh sorry. Natural grown crop is more stronger than the conventional. This field is around our field. So you can see they are already latching. Then these are the results. Uh, you can see there is a significant uh, improvement in the growth parameters of rice, particularly on tillering, on root length, uh, on plant height, number of plants per field, root length, root volume, leaf area index, and uh, plant height. So you can see control has the least uh, figure, and treatment three exhibited the highest. Uh, performance compared to all other treatments. Then in this video, in this table, you can be I want to emphasize here that number of particles is the most important component to determine uh, rice yield. So you can see there is a significant uh, contribution of the piece of this amino acid on the number of particles per year. Then to summarize my report I can say that FPA significantly improved rice growth. Use of uh, FPA with 500 dilution holds potentiality to boost growth and productivity of rice. Or right now, natural science farming will produce high output with natural inputs. 
So I want to end my report by uh, simply shouting, natural science in rice, we can do it. Thank you.